in the room, please. I tell you, I tell you. Good morning, good brothers and sisters. Good morning. My name is David Carl Olson. I'm the senior minister at First Unitarian Church of Baltimore, just around the corner. I'm the co-chair of Bridge, Maryland, and I was so proud this week to turn the pulpit of my church over to Jason Pollard, who's a low-wage worker, works at BWI, for us to be thinking about what it means to be a community of faith that supports the rights, the dignity of all who labor. Amen. 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 To begin our time this morning, I'd like to invite uh, Reverend Haywood Bradley of New Pleasant Grove Missionary Baptist Church to lead us in prayer. Let us bow our heads. Most gracious and all wise Father, we do thank you this day for your blessing us to come together for the purpose of raising the conscience of minimum wage, Father, for the conscience of laboring with the Republic, Lord, as we consider those who may not have the means that all of us need. Yes. Father, we are concerned about the poor, the displaced, and the disadvantaged. And one way to level the playing field, Lord, is to make their economic situation a better situation. Well, yeah. We pray that you move in the hearts and the minds of those who have with that they be not so greedy minded, they have a sharing minded, Father, as in the book of Acts, Father, you've called us to work together. Oh, Father, we thank you for this gathering today, and we pray your blessings and anointing upon it. In the name of Jesus, we do thank you for Bridge and for all other representatives of here today. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen. 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 And in every holy name, amen. Throughout human history, across the ages and throughout the world, traditions of faith have called on communities to treat the laborer justly. In pulpits, on bimas, at minbars throughout Maryland this past weekend, Muslim and Jewish and Christian and other communities raised a demand for justice, for organizing the unorganized, for fighting for fair, safe, equitable, just working conditions, and for raising the minimum wage. Yeah. You know, last month's commemorative uh, events around the 50th anniversary of the March on Washington reminds us that 50 years ago, people were demanding not just freedom, but jobs. And they were demanding a minimum wage of two dollars an hour. Now if that demand had been met and if that had been adjusted for inflation, today the minimum wage would be over fifteen dollars. Over fifteen dollars. We have not come halfway in fifty years to that demand. We have not come halfway in fifty years on that demand. We raise our voices today affirming that in 2014, at the legislature, we need to raise the minimum wage to 10, 10 an hour. A raise to 10, 10 an hour will mean more money in the pockets of the working poor, money that will most immediately be funneled back into our economy because people have to take care of the necessities of life. In Maryland, nearly half a million people work for less than $10 an hour to raise the wages and lift up half a million working families will just be the first step in moving toward a more ethical and just society. We need to increase tipped wages to at least 70% yes. of the minimum wage. Yes. You know, the essential cost of employment should not be borne by the customer, it should be borne by the business. And you know, there are states in this country that do not have sub-minimum wages. It's wrong for Maryland to have a 50% sub-minimum wage, and we need to begin to move that, and to move that this year to 70%. We need to index the minimum wage to inflation. 
You know, in ten, more than 10 states, people got a raise on January 1st because the minimum wage was raised automatically. And we need to do that here yes. in Maryland. We need to index the minimum wage to inflation. Finally, I believe we need to understand the social context of the minimum wages in Maryland. Who works for the minimum wage? Women are the majority of people who work for minimum wage. People of color are largely the people who work for minimum wage. When we raise the minimum wage, it's not just an economic demand. This is a social justice demand that relates to our sense of who we want to be. Civil rights, women's rights, this is what this demand is about. We want to be a society like the one professed by our faith, where women have full equality with men, where people of all colors are dealt with equitably, compassionately, justly. The Prophet Muhammad, blessed be his name, said, none of you has faith unless you love for your brother, for your sister, what you love for yourself. Rabbi Jesus tells us, whatever you do for the least among you, you do for me. The Hebrew scriptures admonish us in the name of Prophet Amos, let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. There was a Marylander prophet, his name was Frederick Douglass. He said, power concedes nothing without a demand it never has, it never will. Our Baltimore City Council, in its resolution, our mayor, Stephanie Rawlings Blake, by her signature, join these voices of ethics, of morality, of justice making, of righteousness. Maryland needs a raise, and we are ready to raise our voices in a great demand. Thank you. My pleasure to introduce to you Chantress Wise. Chantress is a Baltimorean, a native, has worked many years earning at or slightly around minimum wage. She will talk about the challenges and hardships she has faced trying to make ends meet, earning low wages. Chantress. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Chantress Wise, and I'm a 39-year-old native, a mother of two children and four grandchildren, and a long-time low-wage worker in the hospitality industry. I'm here today to support this resolution to raise the minimum wage. I worked in the hospitality industry for 10 years and always made minimum wage. I had a low-wage job that led me to rob from Peter to pay Paul every month. It was hard. You know you have to pay gas and electric, you have to pay rent, and you have to put food on your table to survive. The cost of these things go up, but the wages don't. We need to fix that. So a lot of months, I wasn't able to pay my electric bill because I had to eat. I couldn't provide for my kids to help them out. I couldn't help out my son for his prom. On Christmas and holidays, it was hard. I couldn't help them out to provide for Christmas presents for my kids for their birthday or cook Thanksgiving dinner because I was juggling from pay to pay. And it hurt. Now that I've got four grandkids, I want to make it better so that when they come to me, I can buy them something and provide for them. Working in, working in the hospitality industry, I had all kinds of experiences. They looked down at me because I didn't have a title, because I was just a housekeeper. Everywhere I worked, I had minimum wage and everywhere I was disrespected and sexually assaulted and sexually harassed. And it still is like that to this day. In 2010, I was working at the Marriott downtown and I went to check the schedule 
after being out for several weeks for surgery. When I came back, I found my name wasn't there. I was fired. And because I didn't have any savings, I lost my home and ended up homeless, living place to place. That wasn't, that's why I support this resolution. Raising the minimum wage would mean that people can live better and not struggle so much. With the higher minimum wage, I could pay my bills without having to go to paycheck to paycheck. I could live better, afford housing. If I was making $10 and 10 an hour, I wouldn't have to rob from Peter to pay Paul. And I don't have to struggle as much as I was. Everyone deserves to be treated with dignity and respect. And raising the minimum wage is an important step in the right direction. Amen. Thank you, Sister Wallace. Next, I'd like to uh, introduce uh, Brenda Acosta, who uh, lives in Baltimore County as a member of Casa de Maryland. She's a new mom. She uh, graduated from high school with very good grades and has dreams of uh, going on to uh, higher education, uh, but she's working for low wages right now. Courageously, she chooses to speak about the struggle she has faced as she and her family have sought to live a better life. Uh, Brenda? Here she is. Good morning. My name is Brenda Costa, and I'm a member of Casa de Maryland. I'm here today representing thousands of workers throughout the state that work in difficult jobs, but don't earn enough money to support our families. I recently got a new job as a secretary. My boss hired me because I'm a hardworking bilingual high school graduate with excellent customer service skills. My partner and I work very hard together, and we are doing the best we can to provide for our infant daughter. And we put ourselves through school. Luckily, we can provide for our infant daughter and put ourselves through school. We have our parents' support when things get complicated but we shouldn't have to depend on our parents. We are the parents now, and we want to be able to provide for our daughter and be the best example that we can be. Eventually, we want to, I want to be a teacher, and I want my daughter to grow in a world where she can see that through hard work and dedication, she can achieve her dreams. We're hopeful that with her hard work, we'll be able to overcome obstacles that we encounter, to provide a good life for our family, even though we are working hard, making less than $10 an hour, it is barely enough to cover our basic expenses. We don't make enough money to be able to save for emergencies or invest in our education, let alone put aside money for our daughter's future. I didn't get paid maternity leave or health benefits from my employer. I'm lucky, I'm lucky that I had a healthy pregnancy and also my parents' support. But as I mentioned before, I shouldn't have to depend on my parents. I want to be the one they can turn around and ask for help if, it, if they ever need it. My parents are the best example of hard work, and I'm so proud of them. By raising the minimum wage in Maryland, my family and thousands of other working families would be able to have a stable future and achieve bigger dreams. Thank you. Uh, it's my uh, pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker, a woman who needs uh, no introduction to any of us, Mayor Stephanie Rawlings-Blake. We are proud and honored to have the mayor join us today to join our call to raise the minimum wage. Please join me in welcoming our mayor. To the Good morning, everyone. Raise uh, Maryland for putting together an aggressive and coordinated campaign to raise the minimum wage here in Maryland. I want to thank the chair of the Raise uh, Maryland Coalition, Ricardo Jones, for her leadership. I want to thank all of the elected officials uh, who are here with us, City Council President Jack Young, Senator Verna Jones-Rodwell, Delegate Cheryl Glenn, Delegate Sean Tarrant, Delegate Mary Washington, 
Delegate Kurt Anderson, uh, Councilwoman Mary Pat Clark, Councilman Brandon Scott, Councilman Nick Mosby, Councilwoman Sharon Middleton. Uh, if I missed an elected, I am apologizing in advance. We'll catch you on the, uh, on the end. Uh, but uh, please know it is uh, yeah, uh, an oversight that we, we will look to correct. I want to thank all the union membership who is here, as well as the community associations who are present, present and the speakers who did a tremendous job. Can we give a hand? Yeah. Back to Raising the minimum wage is one of the most important things that Maryland can do to help Baltimore City workers. Raising the minimum wage to $10.10 will give around 472,000 Marylanders a raise. Many Marylanders who work for less than $10.10 will receive a much needed bump in their pay. 19 states and the District of Columbia have higher minimum wages than Maryland, even though this state has one of the highest costs of living. If minimum wage had, catch, ca had kept up with inflation, it would be $10.74. Today, but instead it's only $7.25, an amount that no family can live on. You've heard a lot about what raising the minimum wage can do, but you should know that our campaign is gaining steam, and it's gaining steam for the right reasons. The campaign to raise minimum wage is gaining momentum. Minimum wage increases enjoy overwhelming popular support across the state. The minimum wage bill was introduced in 2013 and had 58 co-sponsors in the House and 25 co-sponsors in the Senate. Both the Black Caucus and the Women's Caucus endorsed the effort to raise the minimum wage in Maryland. Governor O'Malley has publicly signaled that he would support a raise in the minimum wage in 2014. Every major uh, Democratic gubernatorial candidate has come out in favor of uh, raising the minimum wage, and over 120 businesses sig uh, signed a letter in support of the minimum wage. The Raise Maryland Coalition plans to take this campaign around the state and to the legislature until the bill crosses the governor's desk. It's time for us to get our friends, our families, our coworkers involved in this good fight. And we talk about what it means to workers and the dignity uh, that earning a, a decent wage for uh, your work means. We all understand that. Uh, and sometimes we get caught in this notion of what this will do to our economy. You know, how will businesses fare? But the fact of the matter is, when you focus on our lower wage workers, they're not spending their money, you know, on shopping sprees in New York. You're not spending your money, um, you know, anywhere else. Our lowest wage workers are spending their money in the community, in Baltimore. So when we raise the minimum wage, we are raising the buying power for the people who are supporting our local economy. So for me, it's about making sure that we are being smart, that we are being, um, you know, morally right, but also fiscally prudent. You know, this is right on so many levels, and that's why I'm so proud to see this broad coalition of Marylanders who understand for Baltimore to head in the right direction and for Maryland to head in the right direction, we have to raise Maryland. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Brothers and sisters, please join me in welcoming City Council President Jack Young. Thank you, and good morning. I'm so happy to be joined by all these elected officials that the mayor have already named. But uh, we're here today to demand a statewide raise of the minimum wage be passed to benefit the many families that live not only in Baltimore City, but throughout the state of Maryland who are holding minimum wage jobs today. Maryland is the wealthiest state, yet our minimum wage is lower than 19 states and the District of Columbia. We're leaving our low-wage workers behind by keeping it at the federal minimum. As our country continues to struggle toward recovery, we should be reminded that consumer spending still drives 70% of the U.S. economy. 
Increasing wages for our lowest paid workers is a sure way to help put money in the pockets of people who drive spending and are the engine <coughs> of America's economy. More money for Baltimore families to pay for everyday necessities like groceries and prescription medication can only be considered a positive change. Many of these families, unfortunately, are struggling to remain part of the middle class. An increase in the minimum wage to 1010 would mean $466 million boost to the economy and an opportunity to receive fair pay in exchange for hard work and daily contributions to America's growing economy. Maryland is the fifth most, most expensive state in the country. A Marylander working 40 hours a week, 52 weeks per year, must earn $24.83 an hour to afford the fair market rent of a two-bedroom apartment at 30% of income. And a minimum wage earner would have to work more than 135 hours a week to afford a two-bedroom apartment at the Baltimore Metro area fair market rate. These are long-standing injustice that we can make correct by increasing the state minimum wage. At 10 10 an hour, an estimated 4,060 jobs can be created due to the economic activity initiated by the wage increase. It also means that 40, I mean that it also means that 4,000 I mean, 472,000 Marylanders would get a raise, and those who work below 1010 would receive a much needed bump in pay. This proposed minimum wage of 1010 is not even equivalent to, inf to the inflation of prices. If it was, it would currently be 1074 an hour. I'm encouraging everyone in the city of Baltimore to call, email, write, tweet, and Facebook your support of a statewide minimum wage increase and demand that others do so too. And I've come a long way from making a $1.65 an hour. When my first job was $1.65 an hour, and I depended on tips to make up the difference. Amen. So I know what it means to be at the minimum wage, but I thank God that I'm no longer at that minimum wage, and I want you to enjoy the same privileges that I enjoy by increasing the minimum wage. Thank you. Thank you, President Young. President Young presides over a city council that passed uh, a resolution in support of the minimum wage being raised. We are so pleased with that. And I am happy to invite to the pulpit a uh, city council, uh, to the pulpit, excuse me, to the lectern. <laughs> I'll invite you to the pulpit too someday. Um, city councilwoman Pat, Mary Pat Clark um, of the 14th district who was the person who introduced that uh, re resolution. My pulpit is yours. <laughs> Thank you. Dearly beloved, 1010 <laughs> by 2014. Yeah. Amen. Amen. First of all, let me thank the mayor and the president and the members of the Baltimore City Council for immediately adopting legislation that I sponsor. It doesn't happen all the time. But in this case, it was the right thing to do and everybody agreed and I am very grateful and proud. And now we're carrying this effort to Annapolis for 2014. <laughs> now ladies and gentlemen, I've been asked, Mr. President, about tipping. I've been asked to speak on behalf of, whoops, tipped workers. I was one. Marilyn, don't stiff the waiters and waitresses. Stiff. You know what that means? It means you serve the meal, you clear the plates, you replace the order when it's wrong or when they ordered wrong. You take it back to the kitchen to be because it's not warm enough, cold enough, big enough and you clear that table and there ain't nothing there. In Maryland today, tipped workers, and that's waiters and waitresses, it's nail salon workers, it's people washing cars. Tipped workers are entitled to only half the minimum wage per hour. And that is 
$3.63 here in Maryland, an hour. The rest is supposed to be made up by tips. Well, of course, we all know who, don't we, about that. Some days it's good, some days it's bad. I worked my way through college waitressing, and I started back in high school because I had to save up. I know how hard it is to do work for tips, and I know about stiffing. And so we support, the, we're not going crazy here. We're, we support raising that 50% to 70% an hour, even though seven other states are at 100%, and maybe there'll be a friendly amendment in Annapolis, but we're not trying to overreach here. We gotta have this package. And so, let me finally say this. We can afford it. Some of the biggest chains operating here and across the United States have made a 130% increase in their revenues in the last five hard years for the workers. And so ladies and gentlemen, don't stiff Maryland. Don't stiff the tip workers. We need more per hour than we're getting now. 1010 by 2014, thank you. Amen. Did I take this off now? You may. <laughs> really tacky. Come on. You think I should leave it? You're not going to make picture. me wear it always. No, well, why not? I'll wear this apron until we get 10 That's, right. That's, That's good. Right. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. That's good. That's good. You, heard it, you heard it here. You heard it here. So now this bill is going on to Annapolis, and we are so pleased that powerful voices will be carrying this movement to Annapolis. The chair of the House delegation from Baltimore City is Delegate Kurt Anderson, who was a co-sponsor of the bill to raise the minimum wage in the last session. Let's welcome Delegate Anderson. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. God is good. God is good because he's brought all of us together. And it's gonna take all of us to get this done. Now we're all part of teams. I happen to have a team called the Baltimore City Delegation. And let me just have them come up here for a second because I don't do anything without the delegation. This is Delegate Cheryl Glenn, Delegate Mary Washington, Delegate Sean Tarrant, and we're gonna to get to Senator Jones Rodwell in a second. But the reason why I bring my delegation up it's because the Baltimore City delegation is one of the strongest delegations in Annapolis. Give me a wait. You already know that we were able to secure more than one billion dollars for school construction in Baltimore City. Yeah. Our delegation stood to together firmly, 18 to nothing on every vote that would have affected that. This is going to be our new strongest priority. Right. All right. We've, <laughs> we've already talked about the who, we've talked about the what. This is the how. How do we get the job done? Not just the members of the Baltimore City delegation, but we're talking about the members of the Prince George's delegation, who one is here today, but I'm not gonna mention her name. But not just the minority delegations. I'm talking about the entire state. This affects everybody. Yes. Because businesses, not all businesses, but many businesses will pay the least amount of money that they can required by law. Jack talked about his first job being a dollar or something an hour. My first job was working as a person who walked through the, the, uh, the river of Chicago during summertime spraying for mosquitoes with a backpack on my back, pumping DDT, which is a dangerous chemical, into the waters of the Chicago River. I was paid 87 and a half cents an hour. Why was I paid 87 and a half cents an hour? Because the 40s. Because that was the minimum wage. <laughs> if the minimum wage was 88, 85 cents, they would have paid me that. Very seldom do minimum wage workers get what they're worth. 
We think they're worth a lot more, and that's why we want to raise the minimum wage. As simple as that. Yes. Now, we can have an issue where, oh, yeah, we're for it, and we'll help you with it. Or we can have an issue where we're passionate about it. Mm -hmm. As passionate as Baltimore City Council was, mm -hmm. led by Jack Young. As passionate as Mayor Rollins Blake was, just as you heard her. Yes. This is important to all of us. Right. And when you have an issue that's that passionate and that important to all of us, we are out there working not just 24-7, we're working round the clock. Although 24-7 is round the clock. <laughs> My point is, is that the people you see standing next to me are go-getters, they're doers, and they're relentless. They're like the Baltimore Ravens. Relentless yeah. until we get the job done. So my team is going to join your team. Our team is going to work hard. Your team has to work hard as well. We all have to be relentless until this thing goes across, as the mayor said, the governor's desk this April. Thank you so much. Final speaker this morning is the uh, other half of uh, who's going to bring this to Annapolis. We're so pleased to welcome Senator Vernon L. Jones Rodwell, uh, Senator of the 44th Legislative District of Maryland. She is the Senate Delegation Chair for the City of Baltimore. She also, um, I will say, has worked with us to uh, win one half of one percent of money, federal money for uh, on-the-job training a few years ago. We're so pleased to be working with you again. She was a co-sponsor of the bill to raise the minimum wage introduced during the 2013 session. We are so pleased that she'll be leading the way in 2014. Please, welcome. Thank you. Good morning. First, giving honor to God for allowing us to all come here in unity one more time to work for the people that we belong to, the people that we are part of. Before I go on, I would just like to acknowledge Delegate Veronica Turner from Prince George's County. Come on up here, Veronica. Well, I'd like to thank everyone um, for being here on behalf of the thousands, tens of thousands of workers in Maryland, mostly women and people of color, that are struggling to feed, to clothe, and to just provide an adequate quality of life for their families, but are having to survive on a minimum wage. You know, when we all celebrated the 50th anniversary last week, how many of us remember that that was about going for equality, but more importantly, making sure that we were able to raise the minimum wage from 125, as was spoken earlier, to two dollars. Well, do you know how long it took for that increase to happen? Does anybody? 11 years, over a decade, to go 75 cents. We aren't going to let that happen here in Maryland. We are going to make sure that we are strategic. All of the legislators that go down to Annapolis are strategic, strategic internally as well as externally. Yes, we bought a $1.1 billion back for Baltimore City, but that was done because we were doing it in a way that was smart. Yes, we are passionate about the issue, but we have to be strategic when we're going for those resources. We have to make sure that the relationships are in place with all levels of government and all branches of government to make sure that we are talking to each other on a regular basis and the egos do not get in the way. So yes, I heard Delegate Kirk say, Delegate Anderson, Kirk Anderson say, that his team is ready, but we are all a team. We all have to do our part. And it is our part that is going to make sure that we don't just wait until 2016 to get 1010, but we get 1010 in 2014. That it is not just phased in. We are not asking for too much. Hopefully by 2016, we get $15. You know, am I, am, I, am I going and I'm asking for too much? No. It is never too much when we are thinking about our families, when we are thinking about our communities, when we are thinking about the youth that are graduating from college with so much debt. 
but have to go into low wage jobs, that they are going to be in debt probably for the next 20 or 30 years. We have to be serious. We know that Maryland can do better for everybody. And we know that Maryland, will, by raising the minimum wage, will do better to and for the business community that is crying so hard. But if they aren't crying, they don't have a pain. It's just that they aren't educated. And we've got to help to educate them and to bring them to the table. So are we ready to make it happen together? Are we ready to make it happen together? Because this is going to be long and it's going to be hard. But it can and will and will be done. Thank you. God bless you. And it will happen. Thank you. So we, uh, we're told power concedes nothing without a demand, and we are here to make that demand. As we leave this place, Brother uh, Reverend uh, Eric King of uh, the uh, St. Matthew's New Life United Methodist Church, would you send us on our way? Family, can we please join hands as a sign of commitment and solidarity to this effort? The best you can. Everybody say it together, 10. ten. Say it again, ten. 10. That's God's word for perfection and a new beginning of a new set of numbers. Today we gather together. Uh, God's name has been mentioned many times in this place of uh, political uh, movement, but we know God does not play politics, isn't that right? Amen. So let us pray to the God of the people and not of politics. Merciful God, we gather and we give in name thanks, bringing your people together from uh, many places for one divine purpose, for the number 10, to raise minimum wage, God. And we're not talking about people who want a hand out, we're talking about people who want a hand up. God, we, our slogan is Raise Maryland. God, help us to understand the fullness of what it means to raise Maryland by raising minimum wage. We raise integrity, we raise energy, we raise education, we move, really move, God, and have an opportunity to move from, from uh, vacant to value, not only in property, but in people. God, we ask that your, your spirit go from Baltimore to Annapolis, all over the state of Maryland, God, and uh, those who might play politics with your people, make them so uncomfortable. God has been said that we have to educate them. They know what's going on, but God, we ask that you make them so uncomfortable. Every time they're served by a waiter, every time they go to a hotel, make them uncomfortable until they see the real need of your people. And when it is done, we will give your name honor, glory and praise to see that justice has flowed like a mighty river and righteousness like a mighty stream. This we ask in the name of the Almighty who sees, who redeems and provides, and the people of God say together, Amen. Amen.